Okay, so here we go with another game. Uh, this time what we're going to do is we're going to back up and we're going to do it a little bit slower for those of you uh, who are not as familiar with neoclassical, so kind of a beginner's introduction sort of uh, a trade. So let's, let's review what's going on here. This is a chart game. You can actually go to chart game help. You can pop over to here and there's a bunch of stuff of which these videos are part. There's demonstration details. The books are available you know, all that sort of stuff. So things that can help you, uh, places that you can go uh, to get some assistance. Uh, those are available, you know, on the help screen. So if we go back now to the chart game and pull that back in view, and we want to start it, we can either hit new or we can just click on it, right? And it will start up the game. So let's pop in here. Let's let the game start. Now, you know, again, in review, in neoclassical, you're looking at three time frames at all times. You're looking at the daily, the weekly, the monthly, and why you're doing that is you want to look at trend. And you also want to look at what that trend is, and the charts give you some assistance in knowing that. You know, for example, these little arrows on here tell you what the trend is. That's a sideways trend. These are bearish trends when the down arrow. Green just says that there was more volume on this bar when it broke whatever the swing point was over here somewhere. When it broke it, there was more volume on this bar, you know, so here, than whatever it was back here on the other bar. And these are off the side of the chart, so you don't see these, but if you go to one of these that broke out like here, if we look at this red arrow up, that's this bar, what is it breaking? Well, it's breaking this one, it looks like it's breaking that one as well. So the last one it breaks is over here. There's the volume on that one. The break on this one, the volume's down here. And so you can see the volume here, a little bit less than there. You can actually hover over it and see it. 1.7, over here it was 1.9. That's the difference. That's how you get those. Now the trading cube is probably something uh, you've never seen before if you're, if you're not familiar with neoclassical because nobody else has it. It's something I created. I'm L.A. Little. I created this as part of the whole theory behind chart, uh, neoclassical charting, and that is, is that you know you want to be able to have like a snapshot view of the stock, the sector, and the market, and and when you look at it real live, right, the the stock symbol will be here, the sector that it's in will be here, and the market that it's in will be here. But of course, for this game, we hide all of that. You want to know what it is on the short term, intermediate, and long. These are daily, weekly, monthly. So if I looked at the daily chart, I would see that this thing uh, is bearish and it's on a short term time frame. And this is the mean time to failure. So how extended that trend is. Um, you know, and I'm giving you a lot of information here, I realize, and you know, it takes a while to grasp it all, but just another tool to tell you probabilities, right? Because Neoclassical is all about probabilities. It's trying to figure out what the market is telling you, what you can glean from what the market's telling you. And so when we look at all this, this is a snapshot view. I know that's a lot to look at, but basically, you know, if I just look at the stock, it's bearish short term sideways elsewhere. If I look at the sector, the sector is bearish also short term. So now this could be a momentary uh, kind of a a momentary pause, right? I mean, so I could visualize it this way, for example. The stock is sideways. Let's look at the sector here, right? The sector was bullish. So if I were visualizing that, you know, on the let's just take the long term first. 69 says it's been long, you know, bullish for a long time. So that, that's a long term trend going on. If I look at the, uh, you know, the, the intermediate, which is the weekly, right not as long but it's been bullish as well and if i look at the bearish or the daily it's just gone bearish so this could be sort of a momentary pause before it resumes its uptrend on this time frame right and a continuance of this one and a continuance of that one or it may be the situation where you know this has been going up for a long time now you're getting a momentary thing and you're going to just roll over and start back down right it could be both and so you can kind of visualize what's going on just looking at the cube once you get used to it. Uh, but that's uh, the sort of information it gives you. Now, we had the daily chart up here to start with. If we pop back to the daily chart here, 
uh, we can we can see that bearishness that took over it started right here that was a break of this swing point low and so you know if you visualize it here here's the swing point low this breaks it that's why the arrow is there and then it heads straight down after that it's coming and breaking another one here right there's another arrow there and so forth so you can kind of see how this all matches up now if we go to the uh, weekly right on the um, trading cube that was sideways for this stock and here's that sideways trend and so you can kind of see it went down made up made a lower low right sideways so this is some big consolidation looking thing that's going on here on this particular stock and so you know it's, it's exhibiting you know what you're trying to figure out is what's this real trend and so if I'm kind of looking at this I can see big bars down you know high volume here's another one off the top high volume here's some good volume bars the black ones those are up bars here so that's kind of you know saying okay that's pretty good well here's another big wide price spread bar on the way down and in neoclassical you know things that are important is what the charts are trying to tell you and there's only three things that we really look at that's important and that's volume bars right the top six ones wide price spread the top six of those right and then swing points and so when you combine all those things together you can actually create zones and that's what the chart does for you it tells you where the support is where buyers should show up it also tells you where the resistance is where buyers should show up and sell if you have the overlap like you see right here right that's kind of telling you that uh, that overlapping area is telling you that that's a more significant area than this area that's not overlapped and so I would think that you would see more sellers in that area than you would see elsewhere and so that's what the charts try to give you and so all that stuff is visual and it all is out there for you and if I look at the monthly here and see what it looks like so this is just like we were talking about you had a long run up right and it could be that this thing is trying to roll over so right now it's just consolidation right but if it breaks if it breaks like this swing point low that looks fairly significant and you can see this big wide price spread heavy volume bar here if it breaks underneath there again that's probably going to be a problem and so once we see that right we kind of have that in the back of our mind and if I go look at this uh, top of this bar here uh, about 57 if I look at the bottom of that one, it's about 53 and a half so 53 and a half 57 is a pretty important area because if this thing really is a consolidation you expect it to continue and that's what should happen most of the time because most of the time the markets go up not down but if it starts to break down it becomes a very different story and in this particular case it's going to get magnetized back to the prior swing point high that's the retest regen zone which is another concept uh, in neoclassical that uh, has some probabilities associated with it uh, so anyway in this particular case uh, you know and I'm not going to go into all the details but in this particular case this area probably should get bought but that's a long way down you know, that's 13 points off of 50 you know 53 or 4 or maybe that's about 55 I've got it marked up here but you know 13 on 55 that's uh, roughly 20 percent or so and so you know that's an area I don't want to be long if that's what's happening so going back to the weekly let's look at that uh, same area it's about this the matter of fact on the weekly it is these lows that you see so if you start breaking these lows that's a problem and we're coming down to test them now and finally going back to the daily chart which is where you're going to trade that's what these bars up here uh, if I bring this up a little bit these little bars tell you that's how many bars are left in this game so you're going to trade 120 daily bars and so let me pull this back up again so we're coming down you know kind of extended here at this point you know what would you do well I wouldn't do anything you've already extended the downside you've got that support down there you don't know if it's just a range and so I would simply look at the next bar and so when you're trading these are the kinds of things you have to do now I don't have any evidence that I should be shorting this stock again I have some I have some evidence here on the weekly that there's some problems right but on the monthly it's a big consolidation on the on the weekly there's some question marks on the daily you know there's some question marks as well but it's a lot more volatile and so right now we don't have enough information to do anything it just broke 
this swing point low. These two are kind of critical. If we break those, uh, then we might want to start shorting this thing because it's probably going to head lower. So let's go to the next bar and see what that one gives us. And boy, we're coming after it right away. And so we're almost there. Looks like we're going to, well, that, actually this one over here has already been broken. I didn't see that, but it's already been broken here. So it's really this bar that's left. And that's the 55 area. And then if we look over here one more time on the weekly, it's the 53 area, I believe is what we said. Uh, 50, no, I'm sorry, that is the 55 area. 55 there, and then this bar here is also 55, so 56. So this 55, 56 area looks pretty important, and that's what it's attacking right now, right? It's right there. Now, if we close on the week, we will, you know, we don't get a, a weekly bar only gets a bar on this chart on the close of the week, and we haven't got that yet. So we're somewhere, and August 12th was the last bar, and right now, so August 12th, you can actually figure out how many days are left. This is the 21st. It should print here fairly soon if, it, if it's going, uh, you know, we'll see it print here fairly soon. So let's move on, uh, next bar. And so I'm kind of leaning to the ideal of a short here somewhere, but I don't want to uh, pull in here too soon. Uh, this is a decent volume on it. Again, there's nothing to do with this chart yet. We're still looking for something that gives us higher probabilities, uh, you know, that's something uh, useful that we can trade on. Now, as it comes back up on a bounce, you're going to have that retest regen I just talked about. And the retest region simply says that when you break a swing point low, that's this break that you see right here, that arrow down, you broke this low. When you break that low, when you come back, you should see selling pressure in that area. You can see it from the red on the screen, but you also know that just by one of the concepts in neoclassical. So as we come back into that, we want to see how it attacks that bar. If it comes back in within six bars, it should try to get towards the top of that zone. If it doesn't, it's weaker than you expect. So far it's weaker than you expect, but you can't give up yet. You gotta get more evidence that it's really going to head back down or not. Because the retest regenerate means, in this case it's bearish, that if you get into that you should regenerate in the direction of the trend. And what is that on this time frame? Uh, that trend is to the downside, right? So you're coming down, you're bouncing. This is your retest regen zone should regenerate lower. That's what it's trying to do. And so the probabilities favor that on this time frame. And we're looking for an opportunity to take advantage of a probability that we know. You're still hanging there. Still nothing to do in my opinion. We're about a nine, ten bars into this thing now. And at this point we can go over and see what the weekly chart looks like. It should have printed and there it is. So it actually ended up a doji and did not break yet. And so you don't have a break on the weekly. This low, 56.26, it closed 56.59. So you can see how it's hanging in there. So again, no evidence yet that you want to short this thing. If it breaks, we're going to short it. Continue on, next bar, and there's your break, right? Very next bar. And so the short now is going to be potentially, right? Now, I say potentially because, remember, we're on the daily time frame here. That will be a break on the weekly once the weekly bar prints, but it hasn't printed yet. Oh, actually, it did just print, just printed. And so we have a break on multiple time frames. I thought it hadn't, but it has. And so we have a break now, and so that's actually idea. Now we know it's going to print because it did. And so we have it on both time frames. That's multiple time frames breaking to the downside. That's typically a good trade. It's a very high probability trade. And so what should happen now, so you know, now that we know that we've got the probabilities here that we can do something, is we should not get back above anything that's significant. And in this case, it was this bar. And so that was, remember, the bearish retest regen. That's what it was doing here. So it came down, bounces, and now it's regenerating to the downside. This is also an ABCD structure. That's what we use for projections. That goes from here back up, and that projection would be a long way down. And so you can see you've got good reward to risk.
to a downside in terms of how far it can go and how far your stops have to be. And you've also got in that stop, I would probably put somewhere up in this area here. And uh, you've got a potential for, you know, probably about a three to one, maybe four to one in terms of projection. And you've got the odds in your favor from the neoclassical setup that this thing should go. And so how much money do you put on it is the only question now. You can go from 10 to 100. I'll put about, uh, let's put about 60, about 70% of our money on this. And uh, matter of fact, let's put about 60. If we get any kind of bounce, we'll put the rest of it and we'll take our shot. So I'm gonna short 60% of what cash I have and pump it into this thing. And now we got under back over, but we had more volume. So that's still a good sign. Nothing wrong with that. So we're going to hold that position. And we're going to see one more bar, and now it's continuing. We got exactly what we want, and we got 60% of our money involved here. Uh, so hold and continue, and we'll see if it extends to the downside. Still hanging in there. Doesn't want to give it up. Let's see if it extends. And here's that bounce we were talking about. So now. If you go back and you take that ideal I just talked about, retest, regen, now we just broke this bar and we're coming back within six bars. That says we could get to the top third of it, which is this area right up here. If we look on the weekly, we'll, we'll have the same thing on the weekly because it's coming back in within six bars. And so I would be careful here to, to short anything else unless it gets up into here and looks like it's going to fail. Uh, because what you really should have seen is this thing just take off to the downside and you didn't get that. So I'm going to continue to hold because I still think that's the best shot here. Uh, but we have to give it uh, some room here. There's that extension. Now we're starting to get the extension we were looking for. Now one, if they really want to press, they could press more money into this trade. I'm simply going to leave it as it is. Right now we're, you're, we're basically break even still. If I scroll this over, you can see we still haven't really made any money, just half a percent. And so I don't really want to put more money on the line. What I'm going to do is let this extend. And then, you know, if we get a, a, a setup that we can use, for example, we've got a little ABCD structure here that just is just about complete. So I don't want to put more money on it here. What I'd like to see maybe is another bounce failure and maybe set up something else that takes us deeper. And then we try to sell that one. And so that's kind of what I'm looking for here in order to put more money on this trade. So I'm going to hold it, see if it will extend. It does. That's what we should see. So, you know, everything's working like it should. Now we're going to see if it can continue on. And if it can, uh, then we'll look for a bounce after that uh, to give us a uh, trade. So there's the bounce to, uh, let me see here. And we closed at the low, so... I, I don't see a reason to put more money on it. I still just leave it like it is and keep going. And I'm still looking for a larger move to the downside and did not get it. And this is why I didn't put more money on it, right? Because when you get a break on multiple time frames, right, like we did. So we had a break on this time frame and that one that was over here, right? When we get a break on multiple time frames, this thing should just take off to the downside. It shouldn't like you know, him haw around like it was doing. And instead of taking off, you know, now we get a big spike to the down, you know, the upside against us. And so now we're going to have to try to work our way out of this trade. You got some decent volume. So here's the swing point low. So, you know, every time the market does something, it releases some more information. So it just went over the swing point low. So that extension that we should have seen, right, the, the kind of push that we should have seen didn't happen. Now it goes reverse against us. We're back into this one. Remember, this is where we were talking about it shouldn't get above. Our stops have to be up here somewhere, you know, in this area up here. And so at this point, we're going to try to just salvage the trade uh, because at best, you know, when you get a when you get a retest regen like we just saw here that did not regenerate to the downside. Now that says that what was this way is probably this way, right, sideways. And so it says, you know, this trade is probably not going to work. So we got to find our way out of it without losing too much money. If we have to, we stop out. Ideally, we'd like to get something to the downside that we can come out on without losing anything. So we'll hold that position. And a little bit of a turn here. Now, if we if we continue to look at our portfolio, right, we're down about 1% so far. 
let's uh, hold one more and see if we can get a little bit more extension of the downside. And there we do. So now, you know, we're getting back to uh, basically to even. We're to half a percent now. And we got about 60% of our money at work. So at this point, I'm going to try to cut my losses a little bit. So I'll, I'll take about 40% of that trade off. You know, if it's 60% invested, I'll take 40% off. And I'll go ahead and close that part of it. And um, let me see here. So when I say close trade and 40%, it's going to close 40% of that trade. And we got that opening price, so that's good. And so at this point, uh, we're down about 800 bucks. And we're going to see if we can get something else to the downside to extend. Maybe this was false break. Maybe it's just going to go sideways. You know, again, if you just think about the possibilities, this thing could consolidate and continue to the downside, right? I mean, that's usually, that's not usually what happens, but this thing was bearish, it still is, right? And well, I shouldn't say it still is because it turned trend here, but it's a consolidation now. Remember we said what was this way is this way. What do you expect after consolidation in a bearish trend? Well, you expect a continuation. And so that still could happen. It's just not nearly as weak as we hoped it was. And so we have to recognize that and try to come out of this, um, you know, for like we did, take a smaller loss and uh, hopefully make money on it. But you never know, right? That's what trading is all about. You're using the probabilities and the information that this thing keeps releasing uh, to let you know what's going on. So we're only about 300 bucks down now. Let's see if we get a little bit more downside, and we are. So we're, so we're about to, still about 300. I'm going to see if we can get one more. And there it is. So now we could actually come out for even. And so we've got, uh, at this point, if we go back and look at our stats here, we've got about, um, look at here, we got 100,000, you know, just a little bit more than break even. We've got uh, available is about 64. So we got 35 into this thing. So maybe I'll cut that in half and uh, just close that part of it. So I'm down to half the position. And we'll see if we can actually make some money still on this trade. And sometimes, I mean, this is life, right? This is the way trades work. They don't always work the way you want them. And so you keep battling with the trade. We're 29 bars into it at this point. Haven't made much. I didn't get what we expected, uh, but we're able to cut our losses and put ourselves in a position where we can continue to trade it. And I'm still looking to see if it's going to consolidate and break to the downside. Uh, I don't know that it will. And I'm just using this uh, information the market's releasing. Now, notice what it's doing right now. You've got one big, remember I said wide price spread bar? Well, that's a wide price spread bar there, this bar. And if I look at the bottom of it, what is it doing? It doesn't want to give up that price at the bottom of that bar. It keeps hanging, hanging, hanging at that same spot. It tells me that the buyers are still tentatively trying to buy this thing, right? They don't want to give up. They still think that, you know, this thing, if you, if you go back and let's review again, I mean, I, I don't pop these up for you, but I kind of, in my mind, I know where they look. This still, to me, can go to the downside. But there's other people that are looking at it and say, oh, this is bottom fishing. We can buy this down here. And, and they may be right because if you go over to the monthly, right, it still hasn't broken. Remember, we were talking about these lows. That's about 53 and a half, right? We're not at 53 and a half. We got close. But that was probably why we got that bounce. We're at 55 right now. So I'm going to continue to hang on with what I got and give this a chance to work. Uh, but I'm not going to put more money on it at this point unless I get another break. That's multiple swing points. And we're getting close. So here's that low. Uh, the low is uh, 54, 51 here. It's 53 and a half on the uh, monthly chart. And let's see what day we're on. We're on... October 3rd, so the monthly is uh, just closed, so we're going to have to go another month. Uh, so that's going to take a while. So anyway, let's continue on, see if we get a break. And if we do, then we'll look for another place to try to enter the downside. In the meantime, we'll try to make a little money, and it held the low. So the low had 1.97 million on it. It tested 1.95. They're almost even in terms of of the volumes. So that says, hey, it can test it again, right? I mean, it's close enough. It doesn't have to, but it could. So again, you know, the whole theory here that this thing could go south still is there, 
but we're, it's tenuous, right? This is not a place that you want to put a lot of money on a trade because you don't have good probabilities. And we're still trading what's happening on the shorter term time frames, not the longer one. And the longer one may be the correct one by the time this is over. So here we go, bouncing again. Uh, we get over this swing point. Uh, let's see here, this low here, we'd already gotten over it once. The one that was over here, we haven't gotten over. So, so now, you know, one of the things you recognize is that on this chart, as you go forth in time, things fall off. And the reason they fall off is we only keep 60 bars. And that's the, there's a reason behind that. You want to use the most relevant information to make your decisions on. And so those things that were over here on this time frame aren't as important anymore. So now you start focusing on what is important. And so the wide price spread, high volume bar here is the important bar. And so up here, we're probably wrong on this short trade. And uh, down here, if it breaks, we're probably right. And so we're just in this area battling back and forth. You kind of have this little area here as well. So this is support you know, from the people that are bottom fishing. This up here is going to be a failure. Now, notice the volumes are decent on this push up. That's not a good thing for us being short. But, you know, I'm, I'm a little hard headed. I'm going to continue to trade this a little bit longer. I don't have that much money in it. Here's a test. Now, look at this one. Long tail. The low on this is 54.91. Went all the way down. They turned around and pushed it back up. That tells me there are definitely buyers out there that are willing to put their money to work down here at these lows. So they're looking at this, the buyers are, they're looking at this as a potential low that's going to hold, this low back here. And this is a low cost area that you can put money to work. You know, if you're buying retraces, you always want to buy the lowest price point, right? And that's what these guys are doing. Whether that proves to be true or not, we're going to have to see. But that's what they're doing down here, and that's what you see playing out on this daily chart. I'm going to hold that short a little bit longer. Let's see. Give it a chance to work is the way I always trade. If I see the probabilities you know, going against me and I have a lot of money in a trade, then of course I cut those losses or cut those profits, which is what I did at the very beginning of this trade that you saw me do. So still hanging in here, I'm going to continue to trade it to the short side uh, because uh, you know the, the chart still looks like that may be the trade and I don't have any evidence that it's not. Nah, now it's getting close, right? So these guys are starting to get it to work for them. Now, they just created an ABCD structure to the upside. And if they fulfill this structure, if this projection is true, right, this is going to take me right to the top. And it's going to put me right at that risk zone I was talking about. And so we're not very far. Let's see, you know, my, my expectation is, is now they're going to take it right up there and put us on the ropes. So let's see what they do. And they do. They take us right up there, put us on the ropes, do a doji, have volume. So a doji with volume. So that was a battle up there between the shorts and the longs, right? Nobody won the battle. A lot of times the dojis can be a turn or a pause, and one side's going to, you know, scream uncle. So let's see what which side it is. And again, because I don't have much money, I'll just sit with it. Another doji. They're still fighting. And let's go again. There it is. So I'm wrong. And so that trade is a failure trade. Now, if you look, because we cut our position sizes, right, we don't have that big of a loss. We're, we're down about 0.86. And so that's it. We can still recover. And so at this point, right, the bulls have proved to be the stronger side on this trade. And if you look at that weekly, they're going to hold that swing point low. You see how they came down, tested, and held, pushing it back up. Now, they're not out of the woods on the long term, on the short term. They're certainly looking better. If we go to that monthly, that big range that we were looking at is still holding, right? Still hasn't given it up. Now, you don't see the bar that's happening right now because we can't show that to you. Otherwise, you know, the, the, the charts would, you know, show you, you know, what the volumes look like and all that other stuff. And potentially the swing point low would print or a high would print would give you information. So we just don't show it until it actually prints. But you can see this range is still holding up here. And so right at this point, I have to, you know, tip my hat to the bulls and say, okay, you got the better of this. I'm going to have to come out of some of this position. Now, again, I've only got about, you know, 18% of my money in this thing. What I'm going to do is cut it in half again and say, okay, I'll just close half of this trade 
at that loss and lock that loss in and reduce my uh, position or my size because I don't want something to go, you know, bonkers against me. And so, you know, by doing that now, you know, we're, we're just positioning ourselves to do something different. Now, what I would like to do now is because this thing has changed short term is I'd like to look at how does it react if it comes back to this within six bars because if it does you know it should get to the bottom portion of this and you got this big wide price spread bar that we've been focusing on and so that 57 area 56 something area might be an interesting place to try to reverse this and go long so let's just continue on see what it does and under back over that's actually positive that suggests it's going to try to go higher again Let's see what that one does. And that's what it does, right? Test lower, goes higher again, and again, that suggests that it's going to try and go higher. Another doji, and huge volume on the doji. Now, I have no idea what's driving this action, right? Just like you have no idea what's driving the action in the real world. Uh, but this thing is coming up to resistance, pushing good volume. Now, this bar up here, if we look at it on the weekly, this bar up here becomes a resistance zone because you got that little overlap there between this high volume and this wide price spread. And so that's a tough spot. Well, where did it go? 59.24. What's that number there? 59.69. Number there, 59.50. So it's almost into that area, and that's where it starts to have problems. Let's continue on. Uh, I'm going to go on to uh, hold, and I'll pop back over to the daily chart here so we can see what happened and another doji right so they're, they're they're really holding up here at this price i'm not that encouraged by what's happening but uh you know i'm kind of hard-headed like i said and i continue to let this go we're 68 bars into this thing now and we're still battling to make some money and now it comes down and what do they do come down deep into the swing point high top of that one's 56.41 they get to 5741 so they haven't touched into it yet 5741 was that 57 something yeah 5733 so we missed it just barely right almost tested into it uh volume was lighter it was heavier too on that test yeah i kind of like that i'm going to hold again so it says it can hey it can come down and try it again so i'll just continue to to stay here Still looking to take this off somewhere. I just want it to come in on no volume and tell me that. And so far now, look how the chart changed on us. Um, we we you know push some more bars off the side, and all of a sudden everything changes. Here's that big bar we've been watching, but all that heavy stuff that was over here just fell off the bar. And so again, you can see the zones change, everything changes. Now you can see the support given where we're at. Uh, is up higher. Uh, I'm still looking for a retrace I can uh, sell or reverse this position on. Otherwise, I'm going to have to eat this position pretty soon. Another big high volume red bar. I'm just going to continue to hang here and see if we can get there's my push. So here's my push finally. And so that that's what I've been kind of waiting on. And that has huge bar to the downside. 56.24. Wow. A lot of information on this chart, folks, so I'm going to have to slow down. I know this is long tape already, but I'm going to have to slow down and, and show you all of this. So you tested all the way down, more volume, right? That tells me one more time as this market continues to release information, tells me one more time that I want to be patient here. I can probably buy it down here somewhere if I want to reverse that position, or if this market is really telling me something big, this thing may be finally coming back down to test these bottoms again. And so at this point, I just got to keep holding and get a little bit more information. I need something higher probability that I can trade. So we're si we're halfway through the simulation here on this uh, stock that we don't know what it is, and that's given us a tough time. And so that low, it tested it again, this time on less volume. And it hasn't tested this low here. 56.41. And didn't quite test into it again. I got a, I needed some more information. I'd like to reverse this thing. And there's my reversal. And it's actually going to be at a higher price, unfortunately. I'm still going to wait. 
I just don't have anything here to work with. So here, now we get something. We test this because we've got other information here. We test this high volume, wide price spread bar, right? The price spread bar is from here down. That's a huge wide price spread bar. We test in the top. We have no volume by comparison to that bar, right? You can see the difference. And it fails to get over it. Top there, 57.63. 57.55. Go up. What happens? Seller step in and sell it. This is where I take my shot again. And my shot is, is to short this thing again. Now, I don't have huge confidence, but I am going to put some more money on the trade. I'm going to, I'm going to add to that short position that's still out there. Ah, not what I wanted. So I took my shot, and once more, uh, it confounds me and does exactly not what I want. Uh, I'm probably going to eat this trade still. I'm going to hold it and see if it fails here. This is the last chance. If it doesn't fail here, I'm going to have to eat the trade. There it comes one more time. And this, this is like a tease, right? just continues to tease us. There we go. Here's the pullback. So now we're down to 57. I'm still wanting to see it. You know, The, the key thing here is it's in this bar. you got a high volume bottom. you got this wide price spread bar. you still got this bar over here. It's back into it. Volume picks up on the way down. Yeah, I like this. I'm going to continue to hold. And there we go. There's the test. Now, here's another test that's finally taking place. Right. So again, we can we can use the information the market keeps giving us. This low is a test. What does it do? Test with how much? 3.2. Over here is 3.4. Less volume. Test the lows. Came down pretty hard, can't break it. Probably going to get a bounce, right? That's that's what should happen. So at this point, you know, again, look at our look at our uh, position. We're slightly in the money again. We've worked this back to our favor. Let's take some of that money off, right? So we're going to take about uh, we got 64. No, excuse me, we got 35 invested. I'm going to take half of it off. That's about what we put on. Was about 17 and make book that money put it in our pocket because if we get a bounce here then we'll get some more information in a little while and we'll be able to, to continue the trade so i'm going to take about half that money off so let's pull this back up here and we want to close half of that and we got a nice price on it and now we get underneath it that's good this is all positive again so now we've got some positive things going let's see how far it wants to go again and let's continue down to 51 bars or 50 bars. And here we come. Going to test the lows again. And now this bar is finally being tested again. Remember, we've got this big wide price spread bar. We've got this little zone down here that was important. Now, as we get there, right, you see the green shows up to show you that. And so that's the support area. That's where the buyers are going to get the cheap prices again. And what do we have here? We have under back over after an extended move that's a two bar reversal that says the next bar should try to trade sideways at worst probably up and so what i'm going to do is close this trade i'm going to take 100 percent of it off and book it and there is the spike but it does a doji now that's actually bearish at this point we've got 300 dollars to our name um if if I were a gambling man, I'd probably put some more money on it. But at this point, I'm going to go to the next bar and see if it's going to break. And what I'm going to do at this point, folks, is I'm going to make it show me it can break. In other words, if it can come down here and break this, I'll get interested on the short side again. If not, right, I'll I'll just look to see what happens on the way back up and look for another trade up there somewhere. And so that's how you continue to trade these things back and forth. Uh, this video is already 40 minutes, so I'm going to cut it short here. I'm going to finish this game, call it a winner. That's it for this one. Have a great one. Thanks.